My name is Uti Ha and it spells U T T H I and H A. And I was born in Dalat, Vietnam. And Dalat spells D A L A T. Okay. So tell me about your family of origin. How many brothers and sisters do you have? Mm. I have a big family, eight totals, and I was I am the five the fifth uh, child in the family. Yeah, I have two brothers and six sisters. Okay, and um, and okay, and 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 tell me about your parents. Tell me when you when tell me about uh, what they who they were who and what they did. Yeah, uh, my parents, they were born at the North Vietnam and then in um, close to the, the 1954, I mean just 1952, my family decided to go to the South. Yeah, and then in 1954, my country was divided into two parts, North and South. And North uh, belong, was belonged to communists and South is belong to the uh, Republican. Okay. Yep. So did your parents, it's interesting, they moved from the North to the South. Did they have a sense of something was happening, that they would be safer in the South, or was it just something they did? Uh, I was too little, so I didn't know for sure. But I think that they do know, they did know about that, so mm -hmm. they decided to go to the South. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more thing, that because uh, my dad has uh, an aunt. She uh, moved to the south uh, around for 1948 something. Mm -hmm. So, sh yeah. Okay. And what did your father do? What was his employment? My father, you know, um, when he just came to the south, he was a driver. We we uh, she um, actually my family had. Um, a truck to carry all the pro produce from my city to to Saigon, the big, the the capital city. So my dad was a driver for for the for that truck, and then later on, because of the need of the war, he had to uh, go to sign up for some army duty, and then they uh, and then he end up as a policeman. But uh, you know, because he he never wear the uniform, because uh, he he was just a security for the center where they uh, they call the nuclear research center in my city. And he so and that was with the South Vietnamese Army. Right. Okay. And your mom? What did your mom do? Uh, my mom just uh, uh, my mom just do some. Uh, um, Business just like selling stuff and uh, you know so to to support the family. So and then when I I I remember when I was old enough, I I remember that I helped my mom a lot. <laughs> right. And what did you help her do? Yeah, the the first thing I remember that when I was in about fifth grade, and I uh, I, I I used to went with my mom in the morning to all the farms about. Uh, about three, three miles away from the the center of the city, because my mom uh, bought all the strawberries from the farm, and we carry them back to the market uh, to sell to the retails retailers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did your brothers help with that? No, my my brother, the, you know, he he's a spoiled child. You know, my mom re very very. Uh, you know, that my mom didn't uh, ask him to do anything. He just uh, knew, he just had to go to school and uh, uh, playing around with his friends. <laughs> and your all your sisters and brothers went to school. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we do. And we did. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, how would you describe your family? Was it close? Was it loving? Were you guys um, not close? How would you describe that? Uh, my family is a very close family and loving family, you know, because uh, and with the uh, traditional of Vietnamese, we just live like a big families, you know, uh, f just like some family, family, they have grandparents, and then parents, and then children, and grandchildren in the same house. <laughs> so it's really close, you know, so. 
Mm, okay. And what do you um, what do you remember about your city of Dalat? What was it like? What did it look like? What did it smell like? Do you remember anything like that? Oh, I do. Uh, uh, and uh, the Dalat usually in my head because it's a very beautiful city. It's a, a highland city with uh, all the pine tree, all the flowers year round. So and all kind of vegetables that we have here. So you know, Dalat is the place where we produce all kind of uh, um, European uh, vegetables. So we we sell, we produce them to all the other cities, just like Saigon, Hue. Da Nang, something like that, you know, so, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, in a, and, oh, and did your family belong, observe, or practice religion in any way? Mm, any yeah, mm, my family uh, is a Buddhism family, yeah. I see, Buddhist, so, okay. Yeah, Buddhist. But we, I, I remember we just went to the Bagoda just once a year at in the New Year. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't real prominent. I, but what you knew, so so Buddhism, okay. Yeah, but then I converted to Catholic when I got married with my husband. Okay, <laughs> so we'll come back to that. Okay. <laughs> um, so in addition to uh, helping your mother with the produce, what are some other early memories of growing up in Delot? Mm. Anything else you'd like to share? Yeah. Um, I remember all, all the, the beautiful uh, landscape of Dalat, lakes, hills, and um, you know, and the, the prairie. Yeah, I love them because whenever we had Thai, we just uh, went there for a picnic or uh, with friends or with uh, my family. So it's really nice, you know, so. Yeah. And, um and what year were you born? I was born in 1954. Okay. So I, I understand from my research that the Vietnam War started in, a, in 1959, is my understanding? Mm, no, it's, uh, I in think it's from 1954. 54, okay. Yeah, because so were, uh -huh. uh, before that, but officially in 1954, my country was divided into two parts. And yeah. this was divided by the... Uh, I think was it, uh, French, it was, yeah, a treaty. Right, yeah. okay. So after that division and your family had moved from the north to the south, what, what, um, what was, um, what was the, what did your parents say about the, the division and their moving before you were born? How did they talk about the way your country was split up? Did they share? Did you get a sense of what had happened when you were a child and what did they say about it? Mm. Um, I think not much because my 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 parents they were so busy with uh, eight children, but sometimes I, my mom told me some something about the the place where she lived in North Vietnam. So you know, I and I I I think that my mom missed her her city in the north very much, but you know. At that time, we had no way to come back because, you know, we cannot come back there with communists, so. Okay. okay. Um, and did your parents, um, so something happened in 1963 when you were nine years old. Tell me what happened. Yeah, that is a, the, a big uh, event, a big uh, event happened to my country. My first, uh, President of the South, his name is uh, Ngo Ding Zim, and it spells N G O is his last name. D I N H is middle name, and first name D I E M. Um, his uh, his uh, his government was uh, turned down by the, all the the all the um, high rank armies people. And then he and his uh, fam and his younger brother were killed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and do you remember why they were killed? What, what I mean, do you remember what kind of a president he was? Were Were there freedoms? Was he a good president? How did you guys yeah, think of him? Yeah, he he to me he is a 
the best president that I have known for my country. And he very, he treat his people very nice. He care for his people. Yeah, he care for their freedom. He care for their rights. So I still miss him now, you know. Oh, okay. Hmm. okay. I know, I, I did a little, I know that he did some cracking down on protests. So there were some Buddhist monks who had protests and he was, he had some um, sort of, uh, yeah, did you, you know, yeah, I did because you know, at that time they used um, they they used the religious religion to the the communists. They used the religion to to like uh, their advantage to help them uh, to to help them get what they want. Yeah, so you know, and I th President Golding Zim, he he knew that, so that's why. You know, all at that time, all the all the Buddhism Buddhists they they bring they brought their anta down to the street. They put at the middle of the street, so they they you know it's very very bad. You know, the transportation was stuck, and people didn't want to do anything. Just like a big strike for the Buddhists, and then you know finally the government decided to to let the soldiers to come out and to clear up all the stuff and then the buddhists they take they they took that as a, as the proof that the government against them and uh, the government didn't uh, allow them to have freedom in religion yeah okay. so but i think that's all kind of Thing that is just from the communist. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, did you can you tell me a little bit about um, um, uh, so what so what what did you see? What do you remember about that time in 1963 when you were nine and before and after the president was mm -hmm. killed? I think I, you know I I was scared because the first time I knew about I heard. The, the gunshot the first time I, I I saw too many soldiers in the city uh, to and then you know I remember one day I was in my class and then the teacher told us that you you guys have to go home now because they they are fighting uh, on the street and we, we, we you know I was small just uh, about nine so we, we just try some way to go home because we cannot take the main street. Yeah, so it was so scary. <laughs> so your parents didn't come get you? They, you no, you home. know, How because you they, 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 they worry, they, my, my dad had to come back from the, his work and my mom had to come back from the market too. So everyone had to find a way to go home. Yeah. And what else do you remember about, so you got home and then what happened? Um, what happened after that, the next day? Yeah, you know, we had to stay inside all the time, and we just looked through the window t to see what was going on on the street. And then we, 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 I heard many screaming from the people who, who strike against to the government. And then some, and um, we smelled some, I don't know how, the, the, the um, grenade with the, the, the with uh, this hot uh, smell, something like that, to make you uh, sneeze. Oh, like the pepper? Like <laughs> yeah, the pepper, grenade, uh -huh. something like that, you know. Uh -huh. So, and smoke, that. and yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and so who was doing the fighting? Which military are you talking about that was? The South Vietnam. Uh -huh. Yeah, so this was this the happened country. in my city in South Vietnam. Yes, yeah. okay. Yeah. And then after he, your president was killed, then who was in power? Mm, yes, yeah, some, I think, um, someone from the military, yeah, mm -hmm. took over the government. And and um, did you see uh, any U.S. military at this time? In your no, city? not at that time. So no U.S. presence no. in 1963 in Deloitte? No. Okay. Um, and did you, um, so how did you feel after after that? After how many days before you could go back to school? 
I didn't remember exactly, but I thought I think that I was uh, stay home for a pretty long time, maybe a couple of weeks. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, did did your brothers were all of the family living at home at this time, or did you have any older siblings living elsewhere? And we all live at the same time, mm -hmm. at that time. You know, at in ho at home at that time. Okay. And then what's the next major? Uh, so you're nine years old, so you have this, the president's killed, there's, prior to that, there were a crackdown on demonstrators, Buddhists, mm -hmm. and then um, you all come home, and then, and then, then what, uh, what's the next thing you remember of No? Yeah. The next thing I remember about the war was in 1968. It was uh, in the New Year, and we, all the people was celebrating New Year, and they, Stay home and enjoy the the all the day off and enjoy all the good food for the new year, and then the, the night of the new year, we heard a lot of gunshot, uh, a lot of guns and a lot of some exploded something exploded you know, and then finally we heard from the radio said that Viet Cong is coming, uh, and Viet Cong is uh, trying to 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 uh, to see the city, yeah, to to yeah, take over the city. So we we were so we were so uh, you know afraid. We were so afraid, and we didn't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, at that time, did you see any U.S. soldiers then? No, not at that time either. Okay. Later, I think I saw the U.S. Army in the city around 1969 or uh, and 70. Okay. Yeah, late because my city I think is a city for tourists, so and uh, so not many, uh, uh, not many um, military, uh, you know, troop there, but we have some big uh, school to. To train the militaries, the you know, in Dalat? yeah, in Dalat, the yeah. commanders, yeah, uh, and the South Vietnamese commander, yeah, the uh -huh. South Vietnamese commander. We have uh, we have a school, a military school like West Point here, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So and then another another school to 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 train them in a political war, mm -hmm. yeah, and so another school to train all the commanders, yeah. Mm -hmm three big sc military schools in Dalat. So a combination of tourism and this military presence all in one city. Right. So so, in, so I guess the Americans call what happened that you're referring to as the Tet Offensive. They say, they say it's a, and that it, um, so tell me what you remember about the fighting in your city during that time. Yeah, during that time, you know, um, we, we heard a new that Viet Cong came to the city, and but they live at the suburb. It's about three miles to, from the center of the city. So, and then I saw some helicopters flying on the sky, and they shoot rockets and uh, machine guns to the, 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 to the small town about three miles away from Dalat. And uh, I saw some uh, uh, fire, a lot of smoke, and finally, I I heard that they they burn many houses there to 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 kill Viet Cong to look for Viet Cong. And who was it that was shooting down in the helicopters? Uh, I I guess the the South Vietnamese army and some uh, U.S. army too. Okay, so there's. A but I didn't see any U.S. army. <laughs> on the ground. Uh, yeah, around. Uh -huh. Yeah. So your your so your city your where you grew up you're seeing the helicopters and the and the and the shooting and the bombing mm -hmm. and um, was anyone that you knew killed in that um, attack? No, I didn't know, but you know I remember the 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 the, um, the zone where I lived, the 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 chief of that zone was killed uh, with his son. By some undercover Viet Cong in that in my area, okay. yeah. And I know your mother was a leader in your family. Tell me how she was responding and what she was telling the family at this time. 
Uh, you know, my my mom she had a lot of experience about war because she lived she lived in the north, and she deal with many uh, wars there. You know, uh, so she decided uh, after the the we heard the shot and the bombing like that, my mom said that we we couldn't we cannot live here because it's too close to some undercover of Viet Cong. So we need to move to the center of the city where she thought that is, uh, it was safer. And so that at that time, uh, at the daytime, we live in my house, in our house. But uh, about evening, we moved to the center of the city, the whole family, to live. And because we, I have my aunt have a house over there, so we went there to stay f- through the night. And it happens like that for about a week or ten days. So until you were going we back and forth. Yeah. And did any? Did you have any uh, either South Vietnamese or Viet Cong or North Vietnamese army soldiers ever approach you or talk to you or knock on your doors? No, never. So you guys got avoided all that military. Right. <laughs> Okay. And what was it like then as far as working or going to school during this time and shortly after? How did that how did that get affected? Mm, you know, actually I think uh, for just a uh, while just about a month and we back to the normal life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we we forgot about all the event, you know. Mm-hmm. We just heard about that uh, through radio or through uh, the newspapers. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, and your school was closed for a little while, though, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because some, um, you know, because uh, they use school as a refugee camp for some people that their house were burned. Yeah. And the, there, there, there was my friend. Her house was burned too. So, so she had to stay to live in school, the school in some schools, for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at this time, were you able to get enough food to eat and survive, or was there any scarcities in food or anything? Mm-hmm. Yes, we do, We did have enough food during that time. Okay. Yeah. And can we? What we? What do you remember your first interactions with American soldiers? Mm, I the first time I saw them. Um, you know, I saw some big truck with uh, the soldiers in there, and then I saw them throw down uh, some gum, some chocolates to the younger kids. I was about teenager at that time, so I, I didn't pick any candy, you know, but I saw the kids, they tried to get those, yeah. And did you, did you, what was your feelings toward the soldiers? I think they 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 are fun. They like they like a kiss. Yeah. Oh, so they were young. The yeah. soldiers did they? Look yeah, young? they young. I, I think they young. They just about twenty and some. So not much. Not, not, not much older than you. No, no. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> um, and but, did you go ahead? Yeah, but I, I beside the soldiers, I have some uh, um, teachers who teach who taught me English at the. Uh, American Vietnamese Association Center, something like that. So they uh, they they organized some uh, English class at night. So I went there for my English class. And how old were you then? Um, I was about fi- fifteen. Okay, so this is after that mm-hmm. bombardment. After mm-hmm. that, and was that your first time learning English, or did you have it in school prior to that? I I had some in school prior to that. Uh, because when I uh, came to sixth grade, I I uh, had two I had about six hours in English for my school. Yeah. Okay. And did you also learn French? Yeah, I learned French uh, when I was in tenth grade. Okay, so you had Vietnamese and English, and, and then, then French. French, English, and Vietnamese. <laughs> so you're, you're bilingual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, I forgot a lot of my French. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, and so why did you want to take English at this night school when you were a teenager? You know, because I think at that time, many people learned English. So that's why I just 
choose English. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and so, what were your react? What was your experience um, with? Vietnamese soldiers or Viet Cong, do you remember any any interactions that you had with them when you were living in Da Lat? Uh, yeah, I, I, because my brother, he was in army too, so he he had so he had some friends came to the house, yeah, but you know it, they friendly because they they were my my uh, brother's friends, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> I never, I never uh, talk, uh, stay too close to Viet Cong, no. Okay, so how did you know the difference? What, what, what signaled to you this was a South Vietnamese and this was a Viet Did they, were the uniforms different? I mean, how did you? Yeah, of course, the new mm -hmm. uniform is very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, for the South, we were, we, uh, they were green uh, uniform, but for Viet Cong, just black. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and... Uh, all right. So, so what, did your brother have to sign up for the military, or he decided to do it for because he wanted? Yeah, to? he had to. It was compulsory. Yeah, yeah because that time uh -huh. the government really need people to fight for mm -hmm. the country. Okay. Okay. And where is your brother? Is he still in Vietnam now? No, he he. Uh, after the fall of Saigon in 1975, he was put in jail for six years. So, uh, so, and then in, I think in around um, 1980 uh, or 89, there was an agreement between the uh, U.S. and Vietnamese government. The, that time is Viet Cong government already, and they, uh, they arranged some way to allow all the people, all the, uh, the soldiers and all the people in army who was put in jail more than three years can come to the the USA as refugees. And is that what he did? Yeah. So what year did he come and where did he go? Um, he he came in uh, he came in uh, I think nineteen ninety two. So and after you came, you were here yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. I right. came first. I and came in nineteen ninety, and then two years later he came and he 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 came to uh, Maryland. Yeah. Is he still living in Maryland? Yes, he okay. is. Okay. And uh, his wife, she's working for the um, um, the Free Asia Postcasting Radio. Okay, so yeah. she's a radio person. Yeah. That's good. And what does he do? Um, you mean my brother? Yeah. Yeah, my brother, he's, um, he, he was at Kohl's, Kohl's, uh, oh, the okay. clothing store. Uh, yes, the, uh, okay. <laughs> So tell me, when we spoke at your home, you, you, we, so the fall of, right, of Saigon in April 30th, 1975, when we talked about that, you said, you talked about things that happened months before that put, put me back to that time period before the fall. What was changing? What did your mother and you all sort of realize was happening? Hmm. Yeah, about, uh, around mid of March 1975, uh, all the newspaper, radios, and televisions talking about um, the the arrangement uh, of divide the country between Vietnam, with, with, between Republic of Vietnam and Viet Cong. So we heard about that, but we didn't know that it it came that fast. So just in uh, just I remember on March 19, that is the first time Dalat. Uh, my city started to to know that we, uh, we maybe Dalat will belong to Viet Cong. So my mom, once again, she didn't want to stay with to live with Viet Cong. So so he, she decided to move to uh, Saigon, the capital city. And then so my mom uh, rent a bus. So and all our family. Uh, go to the bus with, you know, my mom try to carry whatever she can, all the belonging, I, you mean, I mean, so she tried to, to, to uh, bring some rice. And I remember it's about 200 pounds of rice in the bus. And then all the clothes that we had. And then uh, I remember one sew, sewing machine too. <laughs> yeah. She brought everything and then we, but that time my dad couldn't come with us because he was still in duty 
at his uh, work. And then my older sister, she decided to stay back with my, my dad. So just, um, and my uh, oldest brother, he was in uh, a city um, not too far from Saigon. And the city was called Binh Dương, and it's spelled B-I-N-H and D-U-O-N-G. So we had about just five, 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 five sisters and brothers went with my mom at that time. But you know, because all the, all, all the, 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 the difficulty, because now Viet Cong and uh, South Vietnam soldiers are fighting here and there, so we couldn't go to Saigon. And so we had to go to Nha Trang, it's a coastal uh, city. So, and then we just uh, stayed there for one day, and then we heard that Nha Trang will be, will be lo- would be lost to Viet Cong too. And then my mom, again, she needs to go. <laughs> she doesn't want, didn't want to stay there. And, um, you know, and lucky that uh, the hotel manager, my mom came to talk with him, and he said he, he knew, he, he had some friend, he, he knew some uh, Navy commander, and they had a ship is go, was going to go to Saigon. So he, he said he will try to ask him to allow my family to come with that ship with that ship. And then, you know, the decision was made very fast. It's just about a couple of hours, and then we knew that we, c- we could go to Saigon with that ship. So we once again uh, grab up everything and ready to go to the dock where the ship, um, the deck, <laughs> the deck where the ship was uh, there. And then we, we get up to the ship uh, just around Eight or nine at night. Yeah, at first, you know, we just sit at the the, 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 the the deck of the ship. We didn't know where to go. And then finally, they decided to allow all the family with young kids, with women, can go inside uh, into the room because the soldiers, they, 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 they uh, go to another place and they give us all their rooms. Yeah. This is the South Vietnamese soldiers gave you the Right, the Navy. The Navy did, okay. Mm -hmm. So you got on the ship, Mm -hmm. and then what happened? And then just uh, around midnight, the ship uh, left to to Saigon. And I I remember it took about two nights, one day, to come to Saigon. And you were about 15 then, or? No, no, I was was 20 20 already. Okay, so. How were you experiencing going from your city to Saigon, but then not going to Saigon, then going to this coastal city, and then getting on the ship to go? How? What were your? Do you remember how you were feeling? I I feel sad and lost because you know we didn't know where to go. Yeah, so we didn't know what we we what we will have in another city. Yeah, what what would happen if we come? We can't can come anywhere, so uh, I don't know. So what we will have? What will we, we would be say or not? You know. So yeah. So then, so then, where did this ship then uh, land? It landed in uh, Saigon. Saigon. Uh, yeah. And then what happened? You and your family. Yeah. During that ship, you know, my younger sister, she uh, she she uh, make friend with uh, one uh, navy. Uh, Lieutenant, and that lieutenant told us that he will come back to Saigon in uh, around one month, so we we can go there and see him. So my, I I am I am very close with that sister. She was my younger sister. So on the I think about um, about April April 15, we 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 went to the 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 place where the ship will land and we, we met him. And then do, when we were sitting and talking with him, I saw many soldiers carrying all the rice and all the stuff to the ship. So we asked him if uh, they were going to uh, rescue some people or some refugees, and he said no. Uh, we, we get ready to, to move to Australia because we heard that uh, 
um, the government will have a meeting with the U.S. government. And if after the meeting, if we didn't get any help from them, any uh, just like any support from them about uh, armies uh, and about the guns and the food and all the stuff, you know, then maybe we had to go. We have to go because we will, we will lose the country. He said so. So I was so worried. And then he said that uh, if you want to go, just talk to your parents, and I can carry your family, your family to go with us on that ship. And you know, I, we asked how long does it take to go from Saigon to Australia, and he said it's about two weeks. And I told him that, wow, from uh, Nha Trang to Saigon, it's just two nights and one day, and I. I didn't feel well, and I had some sea stick and everything. So I, oh, I don't want to go like that. But he said that for your freedom, you you need to make a decision because that will help you something like that. So I said, but we need to talk with my parents, yeah. But and then we went home and talked with my mom. But at that time, my older sister she's still stuck in Dalat. Yeah, so my mom said, no, we didn't go anywhere because we, your sister's still in Dalat and we didn't go without her. So we, and then we, I, we did, cannot do anything, just stay there. Yeah, and then just about the t April 20th, April 20th, uh, I, my sister and I decided to go to the place where the ship land and see if he's still there. But then the ship left. And so I had a feeling that, okay, now we were left behind. We, we, we may have to live with Vicon. <laughs> How did you feel when you realized that? Yeah, I feel disappointed. And I feel that, well, I don't know how my life will be. So then fast forward to April 30th, 1975. Do you remember that day? Yeah, I what do. do you yeah, you know that day, a uh, uh, early in the morning, there are some undercover Viet Cong. They came to house from house to house and to, and uh, told us that uh, the um, the soldiers are coming. Uh, just just uh, went to the went to the street and welcomed them. <laughs> and we we know that that is Viet Cong soldiers, not the South Vietnam soldiers anymore. So we didn't want to go, but you know we were so scared, and we had to go to the the street, stand by the side of the street, and saw all the tanks with all the Viet Cong soldiers sit on top of that and wait to us, and we were so it was so hateful, you know. <laughs> I hate them. So. Did you feel like you had to wave at them, or did you not wave? Did you no, I didn't them? wave to them. No. We just uh, what, stood what, there. What was your mom counseling you now? How was she talking to you about what had just happened? What was she saying to you? Do you remember? Yeah, mm, my mom didn't talk to me, you know, because she talked to my older sister. But I guess, but you know, after that day, my mom decided to go back to Dalat because now all the south who belongs to Viet Cong already, so we can travel easier than when we try to escape from Dalat, you know. So you saw, so you got, so you saw the soldiers um, in Saigon after the, it had fallen. What else do you remember? Did you see any violence that day? No, but I saw many, uh, many um, Viet, uh, South Vietnam soldier uniforms around the city. I think all the soldiers that who were in the city, they had to they had they had to take off all their uniforms for their safe. I see. Yeah. So you recognize them as soldiers yeah. but they weren't wearing their uniforms. Yeah. Okay. It's all the uniform on on the street. Uh, how they discarded yeah. it. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. And so your brother what what about him? He was in the South Vietnamese army. What happened uh, he, he, he got ca he was in a camp yeah yeah um when did you find out about that you mean that he was out? in a prisoner of war camp when did that happen yeah not too long after april 30th 
I think just about one month or uh, three weeks later, uh, Viet Cong government told us that all the soldiers had to uh, go to uh, uh, go to register to them in order to to in order they can, they can give them all the uh, training to be you know so to to get used to to get to know to the new government. So they call yeah. it, I think, re-education camp? Re, uh, yeah, but then uh, after that, they set up all the camp, and they call that the re-education camp. Yeah. So they, they cheat all the the soldiers. They said that a church prepare some clothes, some food for just one month for some training, and then you could come back home with your family. But no, it's not true. They, they were, so everyone believed that is true. So everyone re just want to be, because they think the war is ended. So the, so maybe now we have peace. So why don't we do that? And then stay by, go back to the families and we have peace with the North. But then, you know, they put all the people who register uh, for that training uh, to all the, the camps, or the re-education camp. And were you able to see your brother when he was there? Mm, it, take, it took a while, because a couple first years, we didn't hear anything from them. Yeah, and then after that, we received some letters, very short letter from my brother, and he, 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 he let, uh, he let us know where he was living and what he could do to help him. And the first thing that I remember that he asked uh, my mom to bring a lot of food for him because, you know, he needed that. He, he didn't say that he was starved, but he said he needed a lot of food. And so did you go with, so did your mom go and bring him food? No, you know, because that time traveling from city to city is difficult. We had to get a permit from the current government from just like if I leave a city, I need the permit from the mayor or something like that to allow me to travel. And in order to get that, it take about a week to obtain the paper. Yeah. And where was your father since he was he was also in the South Vietnamese military, but he never wore a uniform or carried what happened with him? Was yeah. He, the, 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 the people who uh, governed our city that time, our zone that time, they, they, they said that they never saw my dad wear uniform. So they, they thought that maybe my dad worked for the CIA. So <laughs> they, and then, but, but you know, they didn't do anything and they just, just to find out more, you know. So they allowed my dad to go to some um, re-education class very close to the house, yeah. And he went there about three weeks, and then they they thought that is he's okay. He not a CIA, so they agreed to let him go home. Okay. Yeah. Um. So tell me. Um, so what? Um, um, so tell me about your sister. Your sister, um, did, the one sister went to. Can you remember? Can you tell me went overseas by boat. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Tell me your sister's name and how that mm -hmm. happened. How old you were and what? How that happened. Mm, my, it was in 1987. Yeah, but uh, you know, he, my older sister, he, she went overseas and she, she, she could escape from that. So. It's, it was a seed. It was a set. I mean, <laughs> so she was on a boat. So she was. Yeah. Like, well, no, um, was you know, he we we live in Dallas, and the city is not is not close to the coast. So we we have to travel from Dallas to Saigon, and then to Saigon we travel to another city close to the coast, so that we can go to uh, the sea by boat. 
Yeah, so um, that time I married already. So my sister, she went just by herself. And uh, in order to do that, um, my mom had to pay uh, before she, she, she went. So we pay everything and then they allow her to go to the boat. But you know, it's very small boat. And you know, she went to the, the boat went in a river first, and then it flowed to the place where, to, to, to where the, the, they meet the, the, the river meets the sea. And then from that, they have to transfer to a bigger ship, a big, bigger boat, not a ship, <laughs> you know. So, and at that time she said that she, at first he, she thought only her boat, but then when they saw the big, bigger boat, oh, suddenly she saw all kind of smaller boats came at the same time. And they try, all the people try to get up to the bigger boat. And my, my sister said, I thought I was, I thought I was just a girl, just a young girl. I, I, maybe I couldn't make it. But for what miracle I got to the bigger boat and I escaped. <laughs> and, okay, and she lived in France and then she's no, She here. traveled about four days and he, she, uh, there was a French uh, ship uh, on the sea, they go around to, the, the ship went around to help all the boat people. Yeah, so when they saw my sister boat, they, 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 they help and rescue them to their ship. Yeah, but, and they allow them uh, to choose if they want to go to France, or if they want to go on the refugee camps in uh, Philippines or Malaysia, they can drop them up there. So my sister, at that time, my um, because we had my brother's wife was a, a French, uh, was French Vietnamese, so she came to French already. She lived in France already, so my sister decided to go to French, to go to France, and then. But then, when the the ship stopped at a, a refugee camp in Philippines, uh, my sister still uh, got off the ship and went around the, 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 the camps, see what the living was, and she said, oh, wow, it was terrible. So I decided to go to France. That is the, the good decision. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so after, so how much time do we have on the paper? Under five minutes. Under five minutes, okay. Six. I'm gonna ask one more question, and we'll take a break. Okay, so so um, let me go back a little bit. So um, so Saigon's fall falls. So you're back, and then you're back in the lot. You do, your mom said, "Let's go back here," and you're in the same house you were that you grew up in. Yes. Right? Yeah. What was it like? Take me from 1975 to just before you. What was it like when you got back? How, how was your family living, surviving, and interacting? Yeah, first, you know, we, we went back to the lot, and the, 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 I still remember the first day that we came back to the lot, when we stepped off the bus, and then we saw, wow, the, the city changed a lot, you know, totally changed, turned over, because, you know, we, I came from, the capital city. We still wear all the the flare pants, all the t-shirts and collars for something like that. But then when we get off the bus, we saw all the people with brown clothes, black clothes, and they just like farmers around the city. And we were so scared. Like, oh, wow, we're so different from them. So it's, <laughs> it's that odd, you know. <laughs> but then we tried to went home no, no transportation at that time. We walk home, but no lucky that the, the the bus stop not too far from my house. So we walk home, and then just at that night, just the evening, where after we finish dinner, some we heard the, the the speaker that they hang up up high on the tree close to my house, called my, our names, my name, my sister name, my younger sister name. Uh, go to the meeting. <laughs> we we still we didn't know what happened, you know. But we had to go because we know that now we live with Viet Cong. We cannot 
go against them, you know. So we had to go, and we saw all the people not the same age with us there. That so they then the purpose of those meeting that they teach us about the Marxism and Leninism, mm-hmm. yeah, or the or the the communist theory, something like that. And so you went there to be re-educated. Was that what it, what it was? Did they call? They it? didn't call that. They just call it meeting. Oh, but that is what the purple is. Uh-huh. Yeah. So then, were your parents able to work after the Viet Cong controlled the city? Did they? You know, at that time, all the office were closed. Or uh, do you know nothing uh, happened at that time? So. Mm-hmm. So um, my my parents they had decided to go to uh, to uh, to buy a farm and uh, plant some rice because my mom think that that is safe for my dad because all the 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 the, the, the under COVID it come now they pay attention to my our family especially to my dad. So you're in Dalat. The U.S. has gone. The Viet Cong are in control. The bright colors that you used to wear are no longer what you see in your town. It's all gray, right. browns and blacks, very mm-hmm. dull. Mm-hmm. What was your feeling as uh, about your future as a young woman? How were you feeling then? I feel that I don't have a future. Yeah, I just live day by day. Yeah, because you know, uh, all the decent men they gone to jail to the re-education camp, most of them, yeah. So at that time, I decided not to get married. <laughs> and then for after, and then when they had the, all the, the stuff that going overseas by boat, I decided to go, but I fell twice, so. <laughs> Wait, tell me what, what year was this and how old were you? I was, I think, in uh, 1986. So I was, um, I was about 32 already. 19, no, no, before that, 19, 1983, 84. Yeah, I tried to go overseas by boat, but it didn't work for me. I went with my older sister, and we just didn't make it. And then, so, after, so when I met my husband now, I decided to get married with him. Then my older sister went alone, and she got it. <laughs> so let's go back to the boat. This is new. I didn't know it. So when you, how did you decide that? Did you tell your parents, and then did you have to have money to get on the boat? Can you tell me a little bit about yeah, how you had yeah. to? Uh, at first, you know, after 1975, the living was just like uh, nothing. You know, we, we just tried to survive. We cannot earn much money to, you know, to go overseas. And that time, the idea of go overseas is not there either. Yeah. But then in 1979, when the people that who, who um, were in the foreign country, just like USA, France, uh, Australia, you know. Um, so they, 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 I don't know how, but they, maybe they allow, they were allowed to send uh, money back to help their relatives in Vietnam. So from that, the people in Vietnam started to have some support from overseas. They had money to spend. So now, and a lot, you remember, is a tourist city started to alive again. Yeah, so the 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 tourists um, the tour tourists came to the lot a lot, and then we had a business of selling all the produce from the lot, so we earned money from that. And at that time, my, my I I stay home with my mom, and my younger sister we help my mom to run the business, and then my so my mom saved some money. And when she when she saw that all of her girls didn't get married, yeah, at that time we do, all my sister and me didn't want to get married. So my mom decided to allow us to go overseas by boat, and then I and my older 
uh, sister went first. We went a couple of times. We lost the money, and we didn't make it. Wow. I mean, were you, how did you feel about it? Were you, were you scared? Yeah, frustrated, money? you know, because okay. we tried to escape, uh, escape from Viet Cong, and we couldn't. Yeah, we, we, we tried to, 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 to fight freedom, but we couldn't. So, did you just lose the money like it fell out of the pocket? Did someone take it? Or? No, because we have to pay for the people who organized the trip. Yeah, and then uh, if we, they, you know, because we, for us it's not easy, like some people, they live near the coast. I have to travel from Dalat to Saigon and from Saigon to another city. So we had a lot of traveling, we, and it cost more money than other people. Yeah, but we tried to do that. But then, you know, some people, some the organized people, they cheat us too. They, they fake. They, they didn't have any bow, any trip to help us to escape, but they just said that they do. And then we, we didn't know we pay, and we lost the money because they keep calling us about Every two months, three months, that, okay, we, 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 we can go now. So try to come to our town, our cities. Then we tried to travel like that. And I, I remember I did that two or three times. So, and then I was so, you know, disappointed. And I decided, and when I, get, I met my husband, I decided to, to get married with him. So how did you meet your husband? Where were you? Do you remember the day? Uh, you know, I met my husband through an arrangement of my friend because at that time I worked at a knitting shop. They call the cooperative uh, center. We we knitting all the supporting uh, uh, sweaters, something like that. And then I worked with a friend, and her husband was my husband's friend. So my husband came from another city to Dalat to work after he was uh, released from jail in 1985. So he went there in 1986, and uh, they arranged us to meet him. Okay. So that I think, okay, he, he's an educated man. He was the former uh, soldier, former, former Vietnam Army. So that's good for me because I don't want to to get married to a Viet Cong, so and so I decided to get married with him. And you yeah. were 32? Yeah, I was uh, 32. And this was 1986? Yeah. Okay, so you got married, and um, how did you then go from getting married to coming here in 1990? Well, can you give me the, tell me how your life was like? Did you yeah. have any children in Vietnam? I, uh, I, I, we got married in 1986, and then in 1987, I had the first child. And then, so we, I just, uh, at that time, my, my husband, um, we, we just helped the business for my mom. For my mom. Yeah, we, we work with my mom so that we can survive. And plus, and in, in 1987, my older city, the sister, she 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 uh, she went overseas successful, so she lived in France, and she sent money back to help us. Yeah. Uh, this is the one that you went with and didn't make it. Yeah. Two of you, but right. She then made it on her own. She yeah. got there and she mm -hmm. sent money back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're married. You have two kids. Yeah, I have two kids in Vietnam, and you know one more thing that in 1987 my older sister. Uh, make her trip, and then uh, in 1988, two, one of my older sister and my younger sister, they went, they went by boat, and they, they succeed too. And where yeah. did they end up? Uh, so they end up uh, to uh, Malaysia, one refugee camp in Malaysia, and then they stay there for almost a year uh, to learn English. And then they fill out the paper to go to the USA, and they was allowed to admit it to the USA. And yeah. where are they, they live in Maryland with my older brother. Yeah. 
So then, so you had some family who had who have successfully left. Yeah. France, USA. Mm -hmm. You're married. You have two kids. How did then you finally end up with your husband here? Yeah. Um, my uh, the reason that we can we can go to the USA because my was my husband was a uh, was a prisoner of Viet Cong. He was in jail about ten years. So he he he. Uh, with the agreement of the Vietnamese and American government, so he got a grant to come to the USA with his family as refugees. So we, so that's why we 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 have we got the grant to come here. And then you know uh, when we knew that we can go to the USA, we didn't know where we will live. We didn't know where in the USA, you know. So, but I think that wherever, if we have freedom, then it's okay to us. So, but then, you know, my husband has a brother who went overseas by boat in 1985, and he ended up in uh, Urbana, Illinois. So I, I didn't know how, but the immigration, they found out that, and they sent us to Urbana to join him. And how did you get? Did you take a boat? Did you fly? Tell me about. No, that. we we fly because we we go legally, you know. We so we got uh, we got a fly from Vietnam, and we stopped at Bangkok to to finish all the the process for for the paperwork to go to the USA, and at that time, you know, uh, usually the people when they came to Bangkok, they just stay there about a couple of days, and they got the fly to go to the USA. But for us, I heard that they said because Urbana is a small city, they don't have uh, many flies to Urbana frequently. So we had to wait about 10 days in Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you, so then you flew, and where did you fly first? I, I, fl I flew from uh, Saigon, the, that was uh, called Ho Chi Minh City already, to Thailand. And then from Thailand to Japan, and from Japan to uh, Chicago, and Chicago to Urbana. Do you remember what your first impression was of the mm -hmm. USA? Yeah, first when I came to Chicago, I, I said, "Wow, the city, the city of full of lies," <laughs> because it came at night. Yeah, and it's it was it is beautiful when we see the city from the fly. From, from the airplane, you know, so it's so beautiful. And then from Chicago to Urbana, it's totally different. <laughs> it's darker here, quiet, and not man, as many people as in Chicago. But because I live in a small city in Vietnam, so I was okay with that. <laughs> and do you remember what it, it smelled like or tasted like? Do you have any of those uh, re memories? Or your first American food or anything like that? You know, because the first day I didn't eat American food. I came to my my husband's uh, brother's house. He lived in a mobile home at that time. And they cook all Vietnamese food for us. <laughs> so that is so wonderful, you know, because during the flies, we, we ate all the strange stuff, you know. <laughs> we didn't like that. Just like when I take the, uh, when we took the plane, airplane to Japan, we ate all Japanese food, and we didn't like that, <laughs> so, yeah. So, your family, because of the war of origin, your family of origin is really split up, really kind of got displaced. Tell me when you reflect back now on your life and, and the effects of the war on your family, what, what do you, do you have any conclusions, do you have any thoughts? What do you make of it? Yeah. I, I think that the war brings out all the sadness, all the loss, um, all the suffer. But then, lucky that we got some miracle, we can come to the free land. The, and we, we, now we have a better life. Yeah. And so, you, you said this word when we met at your home. I haven't heard it yet today, but you mentioned hope. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how your feelings of hope changed from, or how, what hope has been like in your life? 
just the feeling of hope. Tell me, describe that. Yeah, my hope is uh, I usually hope that everything will be better during the time I was with, with Vicon. So that's why we decided to go overseas. That is a way of hope to get better. But we didn't get it. But then later on when I got married, the, the, the living was tough at that time too. But I still hope that, yeah, well, some way, maybe I will get some better life. And then it's true that my husband got a grant to go to the USA, yeah. So that my hope comes true when we come to the USA. <laughs> and when you came here, you weren't rich, and you had to find work. Can you tell me a little bit about your transition from your, you know, meeting your, um, you know, the your family in in Urbana? How did you sort of get established? How did you, you know? Mm. Uh, do you believe that when we came to the USA, we had only nine hundred dollars? My mom gave me some gold. And when we, I came to Thailand, I, sell, I sold the gold to get dollars. We had about $900 from the beginning. And we came here and uh, we got the uh, public assistance from the government here. So we, at that time, they gave us one year of uh, public assistance. That means cash, food stamp. So we survived with that. And I remember just um, my husband went back to school uh, at the adult education in Urbana to, 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 lear to uh, learn his English again. And then I stayed home with my kids. So he went there just about a couple months, and then he got his GED. So he, he decided to, to find a job. And he, he got a job at um, some uh, factory in town. Yeah, and he stayed there until he retired. That's, uh, that's a good thing. But you know, and we got some uh, uh, lucky that we, in 1992, the refugee director, Miss Quit Nguyen, she encouraged me to apply for the Habitat house. And I got the second whole house from Habitat. Yeah, it's a very good program, you know, because we we can buy a house and we just uh, deposit 500 working hours. That is our deposit and $500. And then we can get the house. And we pay the house in 20 years with no interest. So how sweet it is, you know, so it's so nice. And we live in that house for nine years. We save money. And then my kids getting older, they grow up. So I want them to live at a better area, so we did decided to move to another house. So, and also you work here in the U.S. Tell me what you do. Um, I, I at first I didn't know what I will work will do, you know, because uh, I have some English already, but no no decrease, no certificates, nothing. So, but then. I lucky, I'm lucky that because the Quit Nguyen, the refugee director, was my teacher in Vietnam. So um, he, she didn't know that I, I already know English. So until I brought some uh, um, transcript, uh, university transcript to her to translate into English, and she found out that I had some basic English. So she decided to interview me to become her staff. <laughs> so, and then that's what I start my job <laughs> from 1993 until now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you also work at Carl's? Yeah. What do you do there? I, I am an, a medical interpreter for Carl. Yeah. Okay. And um, do you, what do you say about, we've also interviewed soldiers who were in combat, U.S. soldiers who went to Vietnam to fight, and some of them have said, you know, they didn't believe in the reasons we were there, or, you know, they saw people, you know, were killed, or they have horrible memories and they can't function in, in life. So how do you, um, when you hear stories like that, what does that, how do you interpret that in your, in your, in your um, assessment of the war? 
you know, I think that's it. Uh, you know, that is uh, right because you know, they are stranger. Just like Vietnam were, they are strangers in Vietnam. They didn't know the culture. They didn't know the food. They didn't know the local the area. They really they didn't know anything about Vietnam, and they had to live there, and they had to fight too. So a lot of stress for them. Yeah. And when when the U.S. did pull out, were you were you did you wish they had stayed? Were you angry? Were you, what was your thought about the U.S.'s relationship to fighting the war against communism? No, not angry at all. I, 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 thank, I am thankful for their prison in Vietnam. With their help, at least we can fight Viet Cong for a while. Okay. Um, oh, and okay, so you got here in 1990. Tell me, where did you go back to Vietnam? If so, when and what for? Um, I went back there twice. The first time I went back was in 1998 when I got my U.S. citizenship already. So that's why I think now I am safe to come, to go back there. So I went back there with my two uh, girls uh, to visit uh, my parents so that my, the girl that was born here can see her, par her grandparents. And my kids, they really love the living there, you know, because, you know, here they never hold the money to buy food because they was too little. But then, you know, they can uh, hold money and buy this, buy that on the street, you know. That, that is the Vietnamese culture, so mm -hmm. <laughs> they enjoy that. Mm -hmm. right. So you said you felt safe. So you, you went back and you felt safe. So it was only after you were a U.S. citizen that you felt safe enough to go back, is that right? Yeah, you know, oh, because, I know, I because I think with the, with, with, with the um, U.S. citizen, if I they get me in trouble, at least I can get help from the um, embassy, U.S. embassy. Yeah. Okay. Because you know who knows what, who who knows what when you deal with it, with Vietcom, you don't know what will happen to you. And what um, what was the second time? The reason for the second time? The said? second time was in nineteen. Uh, no, it was 2004 when my dad died. And then um, uh, three months later, I came back there to visit my mom yeah, and to, to see my dad's grave. Yeah. And then shortly after that, your mom? Yeah, just about six months later, my, my mom uh, passed away too because, you know, I think maybe she was lonely. And when you think back about your parents and the, the way they supported you and encouraged you, what, what do you take away with? What do you think of when you think of your parents now as, a, as the, the woman you are here in the U.S., an American citizen? Yeah, I, I feel so thankful to my parents because, you know, my, par my parents, they didn't go to school at all, but then they, they see what good for our future, for their children's future, so all of her children can go to school, can have some education, can have some knowledge. So the, then, then I think my mom uh, sacrificed for us a lot because the, they, she keeps thinking about our safe. So that's why we have to move here and there just for safe, for survive, surviving. Um. Is there anything else you want to tell us about either your experiences of being a civilian in a war, in a country that was at war, or your experiences as a, as a, a new immigrant, as a refugee, really, a new immigrant to this country? Mm. I think the war bring us some bad thing, but then from the war, we got some good thing, too, so that the bad thing that when we was leave, when we leave with Viet Cong, and the good thing when, be, because of that, we can go to the USA. Mm -hmm.